The Haber process produces ammonia from elemental nitrogen, N2, and hydrogen, H2. The formula of ammonia is NH3. Ammonia is used in a variety of ways. It is used as a cleaning agent. It is also a coolant in some air conditioners. Ammonia is also used to manufacture nitrogen fertilizers. The reaction between N2 and H2 is reversible. This means that both forward and reverse reactions can occur at the same time. N2 and H2 react with one another to form NH3 and NH3 decomposes, it splits, back into N2 and H2. In the Haber process, this reversible reaction occurs in a closed system and so it reaches dynamic equilibrium. In dynamic equilibrium, both the forward and reverse reactions occur at the same rates as one another. The forward reaction in the Haber process has a high activation energy. Activation energy is the amount of energy needed to get a reaction started. This reaction has a high activation energy because nitrogen gas is inert. Inert means that it is very unreactive. This is because the two nitrogen atoms making up the N2 molecule are very small and are held together by a strong triple covalent bond. Consequently, they are held together very tightly and a lot of activation energy is needed to break them apart. A catalyst is a chemical which serves as a binding site on which a reaction can occur. This makes it easier for the chemicals to react. It decreases the amount of activation energy that is needed for the reaction to get started. This speeds up the reaction. In the Haber process, an iron oxide catalyst is usually used. Ruthenium can also be used as a catalyst for the Haber process. During the Haber process, hydrogen, H2, and nitrogen, N2, are the reactants. Three molecules of hydrogen are needed to react with every one molecule of nitrogen. The reactant molecules are adsorbed onto the catalyst surface. This means that they bind to the catalyst surface. The reactant molecules then dissociate. The intramolecular forces or bonds between the atoms break. The individual atoms then move apart from one another. They are now free to bond in a different arrangement to form the product, ammonia. The formula of ammonia is NH3. Two molecules of ammonia are formed for every molecule of N2 that reacts. The ammonia molecules are then released from the catalyst surface. We say they are desorbed from the catalyst. This is a schematic diagram of the Haber process. The reactants, N2 and H2, together with unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen which is recycled back into the process, are fed into the top of the reaction vessel. The ammonia gas that is formed is cooled until it liquefies. The liquid ammonia is then led off. A reversible reaction which occurs in a closed system can reach dynamic equilibrium. This happens in the Haber process. When dynamic equilibrium has been reached, the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal to one another. As a result, the amounts of reactants and products do not change over time. This might make it seem as if nothing is happening. However, the equilibrium is dynamic. Dynamic means moving or changing. This means that the atoms change places with one another. This can be seen by the N and H atoms which have been colored differently in this animation. Sometimes they are part of N2 and H2 molecules and sometimes they are part of NH3 molecules. According to Le Chatelier's principle, when a system which is in equilibrium is disturbed, it will respond in such a way as to counteract the disturbance. An increase in pressure increases the crowding of gaseous molecules. The system will respond by decreasing their crowding 
overcrowding is decreased in gases when fewer molecules are formed. In the Haber process, the forward reaction makes fewer molecules than the reverse reaction. In the forward reaction, two molecules of ammonia are made from four molecules of reactants, 1N2 and 3H2 molecules. Consequently, an increase in pressure disturbs equilibrium for a while by making the forward reaction occur at a higher rate than the reverse reaction. This causes more ammonia to be formed and less nitrogen and hydrogen. After a while, a new dynamic equilibrium is reached. The rates of forward and reverse reactions are again equal to one another and the amounts of reactants and products will remain constant. However, Compared to before the pressure was applied, there will now be more ammonia present at equilibrium. The equilibrium constant value Kc, however, will be the same as it was in the original equilibrium. Decreasing pressure decreases the crowding of gaseous molecules. The system will respond by increasing their crowding. Crowding can be increased by forming more molecules. In the Haber process, that means for a while the reverse reaction will occur at a higher rate than the forward reaction. The reverse reaction changes every two molecules of ammonia into four molecules, one nitrogen and three hydrogen molecules. This causes the amount of ammonia present to decrease and the amount of nitrogen and hydrogen to increase. While this is happening, the system is not in equilibrium. After a while, a new dynamic equilibrium will be reached, in which the rates of both forward and reverse reactions will equal one another and the amounts of reactants and products will remain constant. However, compared to before the pressure was applied, there will now be less ammonia present at equilibrium. The equilibrium constant value, Kc, however, will be the same as it was in the original equilibrium. In the Haber process, we want to make as much ammonia as possible. We want the dynamic equilibrium to be such that a lot of product is formed. An increase in pressure will cause more product to form. We need as high a pressure as it is safe and economical to use. Pressure means force per area. The pressure exerted by a gas is related to the rate at which its particles hit against the sides of its container. Pressure can be measured in various units. The most common are bars, atmospheres, kilopascals and millimetres mercury. At sea level, at zero degrees Celsius, the pressure is one atmosphere. This equals 101,3 kilopascals, 760 millimetres mercury, and is approximately one bar. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of particles. The standard international unit of temperature is the Kelvin. In South Africa, we commonly report temperature in degrees Celsius. The freezing point of water is taken as 0 degrees Celsius. This is 273 Kelvin. To convert from a temperature in degrees Celsius to Kelvin, we add 273. To convert from a temperature of Kelvin to degrees Celsius, we subtract 273. As a quick reference state, we often refer to STP. STP means standard temperature and pressure, which is taken as being 273 Kelvin and 101,3 kilopascals. The purpose of the Harbour process is to produce ammonia. Therefore, we want to get a high ammonia yield. We want the dynamic equilibrium that is reached to have as high a proportion of ammonia to H2 and N2 as possible. As pressure is increased, the yield of ammonia increases. However, there are disadvantages of using high pressures too. High pressures are dangerous and expensive. 
Consequently, we need to use as high a pressure as it is safe and economical to use. We say we need to use an optimal pressure. The pressure for which we get a good value for a reasonable price while still being safe. Pressures between 200 and 300 atmospheres are typically used in the harbour process. Heating a reaction up increases the kinetic energy of the particles and so causes them to react more rapidly with one another. Additionally, heat can have an effect on disturbing the equilibrium of a reaction. In the harbour process, the forward reaction is exothermic and the reverse is endothermic. This means that as nitrogen and hydrogen react with one another to form ammonia, heat is released. But as ammonia breaks up into hydrogen and nitrogen, heat is absorbed. According to Le Chatelier's principle, when a system which is in equilibrium is disturbed, it will respond in such a way as to counteract the disturbance. So if heat is added to a system in the harbour process, the endothermic reverse reaction is favoured to absorb some of that heat and so cool the system back down. Both the forward and reverse reactions occur at higher rates than before the heat was added due to the additional kinetic energy of all the particles. But the reverse reaction will be speeded up to a greater extent than the forward reaction. So for a while the system will not be in equilibrium as the reverse reaction occurs more rapidly than the forward reaction. This will decrease the amount of ammonia present and increase the amount of hydrogen and nitrogen. After a while a new dynamic equilibrium is reached. The rates of forward and reverse reactions are again equal to one another and the amounts of reactants and products will remain constant. However, compared to before the heat was added, there will now be less ammonia present at equilibrium. A new equilibrium constant, Kc, lower than that of the original equilibrium, is reached. Cooling a system that is in equilibrium has two effects. Firstly, by decreasing the kinetic energy of all the molecules, it reduces the rates of both the forward and reverse reactions. Secondly, it has the effect of disturbing the equilibrium by favouring the exothermic reaction until a new equilibrium is reached with a different equilibrium constant. If heat is removed from a system in the harbour process, the exothermic forward reaction is favoured to heat the system back up. For a while, the system will not be in equilibrium as the forward reaction occurs at a higher rate than the reverse reaction. This will increase the amount of ammonia present and decrease the amount of hydrogen and nitrogen. After a while, a new dynamic equilibrium is reached. The rates of forward and reverse reactions are again equal to one another and the amounts of reactants and products will remain constant. However, compared to before the system was cooled, there will now be more ammonia present at equilibrium. A new equilibrium constant, Kc, higher than that of the original equilibrium, is reached. In the harbour process, we want to get a high ammonia yield. We want the dynamic equilibrium which is reached to form as much ammonia product as possible. As temperature is increased, ammonia yield decreases. Consequently, we need to use a fairly low temperature. However, at a low temperature, it takes a very long time for equilibrium to be reached. Therefore, a compromise is made and a temperature of approximately 450 degrees Celsius is often used.